Hello everyone, my name is Arpana and I am a trainer at Academy for Benchmarking and uh, this is our second video in our series of IELTS uh, writing. We have already another first video which shows you the guidelines, tips and strategies and do's and don'ts on how to go about writing. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, start or how to set about writing a one-sided essay. And there is another essay writing video on balanced approach. So after this, do ensure that you watch that video as well. And uh, it is a good idea uh, to uh, intermittently pause these videos and make a note of the contents on the slides. And if you did like our video and you found it uh, informative enough, do give us a like and subscribe to our channels. And you can also write in to us. So here goes our uh, question on one-sided essay. Computers are being used more and more in education and some people believe there will soon be no role for teacher in education. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So when you have such a question, you would know that it is a one-sided essay because the latter part of it reveals or divulges what kind of essay it is. And alternatively, you might get questions like, do you agree with the statement? To what extent? Or do you disagree with the statement? To what extent? In such kind of questions, you adhere to strictly one side and you write only on one side. The choice is entirely yours, whether you agree that there should be a teacher in flesh and blood or you think that she's going to become redundant in the next few years. Whenever you see a question, your first step is to prepare a mind map, even if it is a computer based exam that you're going to. So this helps you write better and you don't have to keep editing. And in paper based, it is not a good idea to erase the words, cut sentences. It's, it's an unnecessary waste of time. And also decide which side you have proclivity towards, which side you are tilting towards. That will really help you go about writing a one sided essay. So think of ideas and examples. If you agree, why you agree to those? If you disagree, why you disagree to those? Okay, so before we talk of how to write the first paragraph, we will think of ideas on what to write in the second paragraph and what to write in the third paragraph. Because it is purely a one-sided essay, we are going to write on one side. Personally speaking, I think a teacher and no, te a live teacher is definitely a must. Uh, not only because I'm a teacher, I've also learned from other teachers and I follow other digital teachers. So I think that she's indispensable. So what I have decided is that in my second paragraph, I'm going to talk of the uh, advantages of having a live teacher. And in the third paragraph, the drawbacks of online learning. So in the first um, point why i want to teach her the primary uh, reason is that the body language and facial expressions of the pupils definitely reveal a lot to the uh, tutor whether that um, learner is understanding the concept or no if she if she can make out from his gestures that that pupil is not able to understand probably she would try to simplify it and try some other way of explaining a content matter and the second point is students are able to clarify their, their uh, clarify the doubts then and there. So, you know, they, it tranquilizes their muffled minds. They don't have any doubts in their heads. Thirdly, uh, teachers are able to give instant feedback. So they are able to rectify the errors of the disciples there and then. And another notable point is that um, more often than not, disciples have a revered fear for their mentor. So because of that, they tend to uh, complete their assignments, homework, and even the studies on time. So that makes a difference. Now, moving on to the drawbacks of online learning. Um, personally, I feel that it is more of a one-way learning. There is less of participation, less of interaction. And even among themselves, I think the students get to interact very less with their classmates because of which uh, they might suffer from um, um, probably um, you could say social isolation and because of which they would also feel irritable over time when you know it is they themselves studying alone at home without um, their classmates being around and as we have seen in this latest pandemic uh, you also suffer from fatigue it's not only the children it's also the adults because your eyeballs don't move much uh, long hours of staring on this green lead to headache and eye strain and there is an overall fatigue okay 
now that i've gotten the points this wouldn't sh this shouldn't take more than three to four minutes i will now think of some uh, synonyms and effective words that i can incorporate in my essay remember don't write a word and try to create a sentence around it go with the flow go with write a good sentence and see if these words can be incorporated so even though we are collecting a lot of words it's not necessary that all these words have to be uprooted they should not seem forced so instead of uh, computers i can use desktops laptops or um, smartphones are not a direct synonym but alternatively you can use uh, a smartphone then there is something called a technological equipment you can use that word you can use gadgets widgets you can also use gizmos gizmos are words used by people who don't know what a tool is called they cannot differentiate whether it's a hotspot ipad iphone it all looks the same to them okay alternative words for a teacher would be preceptor erudite person erudite is a knowledgeable person guardian learned one mentor tutor knowledgeable one enlightened one explicator explicator is the one who explains and a scholarly guardian um you could also use prof a professor depending on the context and other words for students would be tutees learners mentees disciples pupils eager children and inquisitive ones you may also try to use words like academicians they are honorific titles given to full time members of an academy and you can also try using alumni alumni are the past students of an educational institute uh, alternatively instead of uh, completely change you may use words like transformed or revolutionized so that's it on the synonyms and word front so let's uh, get going on writing the first paragraph the very first sentence of your uh, essay should be a paraphrase statement of your topic sentence meaning you have to rephrase a topic sentence in a different way without changing the meaning you have to keep the same gist so good way for write, a good way of writing a paraphrase statement is using synonyms or changing the voice okay and then you should also write a thesis statement that is which side you are going to write on you are clearly mentioning that in your first paragraph so the reader is able to read your entire essay from your perspective um, the points are clear and also ensure that you write an outline statement it is a brief about what your entire essay is going to encompass and it is not necessary that you write three distinct sentences you can write two sentences also meaning you can club thesis and outline statements together it seems natural so let's attempt to paraphrase the topic sentence instead of computers i may use technological devices instead of more and more you can use increasingly instead of believe you can use opine suppose think and here goes my final um, paraphrase statement technological devices are increasingly being used by teachers and students alike a few individuals opine that this would obviate the need for a teacher so the paraphrase statements have rephrased it but i've made it two shorter sentences keeping the meaning same obvious is making it necessary for a teacher to be there i do not concur with the statement and this essay elucidates the reasons why a scholarly guardian cannot be superseded so what i've done is i've clubbed the thesis statement and the outline statement together into one sentence i do not concur is i do not agree with this and el elucidates is explains and superseded is taking the place of so you do not write pointers like this i have shown one one um, sentence at a time for you to get it but you write it as one complete paragraph i've also highlighted some difficult words the meanings of which will be there towards the end of the paragraph now how do i go about writing the second paragraph you can get directly to the point but a good idea is to start with a relevant quote or a proverb okay so in this case so uh, i've written this one as per one of the sanskrit sayings just as a matchstick lights up a dark place so does a preceptor open your eyes of ignorance so this quote has stuck my head but if you draw a blank you're not able to think of a related quote or proverb to do with a teacher you could define the key word in your own words so uh, instead of computers uh, so you can define computers like uh, computers are electronic equipment uh, that uh, make um, human work easier or you could say a teacher is someone who simplifies and explains a concept in a lucid manner 
do not just say a teacher is one who teaches that seems very simple and very basic okay and then i show how this quote is relevant to the essay this quote highlights the significance of a teacher in one's life be it academic or spiritual be it implies whether it is and then notwithstanding the exponential growth in the usage of smartphones and computers in schools and homes for educational purposes a tutor is indispensable so notwithstanding here is used in place of in spite of or despite exponential is a sudden increase of and indispensable means it is a must they are necessary okay and now the reasons firstly a mentor is able to give a mentee concrete feedback correcting him the moment he makes a mistake secondly an erudite person in flesh and blood may just digress a little bit to give you a background information of uh, some topic so they just don't stick to the textbook topic they might just give you an overall picture and that helps you understand the concept in a bigger uh, way uh, so that is what i've tried to explain here a student grasps the fundamentals better keeping in mind the bigger picture and then the nuances of a concept language or program can be best understood when there is a physical teacher present in front of a disciple nuances are the small subtle differences it is a no brainer that a student teacher bond is special and most of the academicians and alumni remiss the time spent together even after many years it is a no brainer means it is obvious remiss is you recollect the happy times so remiss is used when you want to think of happy times and not the bad times that you spent okay and when i add more examples i use terms like more over further more in addition so i started with further more Furthermore, a child's body language and facial expressions help an explicator gauge whether his explanations have been well comprehended by the former. Explicator is a person who explains and gauges estimate, comprehends, is understood. Okay, so all this I've combined into the uh, second paragraph. So you can uh, know these contents. You can pause the video at this stage and make a note of it. and now we move into the third paragraph wherein we are going to explain the cons of online learning although visual images and color contrast expedite learning over time this methodology is likely to undermine the reading ability of denarians expedite is making it faster hasten undermine is reducing the effectiveness so if you have noticed over time when you just rely on audio visual learning your reading speed reduces and it could prove an impediment in the long run so it's not a good idea to always rely on pictures or listening you should also be reading denarians are all those people who are between the age of 10 to 19 and then the second point is additionally if a learner fails to assimilate a topic there is nobody whom he can approach and even if he is able to do so it is more often than not ephemeral also the enlightened one is likely to be sitting at the other end of the world assimilators absorbing taking so here obviously it means understanding but in biology assimilators absorption of the nutrients after ingestion of food and you can also use assimilate in a society that means you become one in a society without feeling left out ephemeral is a word used for short lived that you don't exp- it is not long it is not for a longer time enlightened one is who has well informed modern and a rational approach okay moreover there is less interaction amongst classmates which in turn engender social isolation diffidence and irritability engenders is a good word which means it causes it leads to it gives rise to and then diffidence is um low in confidence so anyone who is an introvert you can also call him diffident who is who hesitates to open up as evidence in the pandemic of 2020 myriads of children suffered from bouts of headaches eye strain and fatigue due to exposure of uv rays radiated by the gadgets evidence is as seen as demonstrated and myriads is another word of many numerous okay so all this make up the third paragraph and again you can pause over here and write down its contents so we have written the first paragraph second paragraph third paragraph and finally the conclusion 
conclusion is a summation of what you have mentioned so you're not going to mention anything which is new so herein i have stated to conclude i trade the fact that no matter how progressive and technically mirific we may have become pedagogical techniques demonstrated by a live mentor can never be replaced this noble profession is here to stay so mirific is another word for amazing you can also use mirifical and pedagogical is to do with uh, the uh, teaching uh, methodology the methods of teaching and here i have written all the meanings of these uh, of the difficult words that we just used uh, again you can note them down and try using it in your uh, daily language so that you get comfortable accustomed to using these okay okay now here uh, i have composed some uh, sample questions on one sided essays uh when you have a variety of essays and you practice different topics you get familiar with the ideas okay so here if you look at um um the second question there are fewer controls over the designs and construction of home and office buildings so people can build them however they like do the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages now this kind of question the latter half say asks you do you think the advantages outweigh that is, is it more than the disadvantages in such questions i recommend oh. a, an 80 20 ratio meaning you can write four points on one side and one point on the other alternatively you can write three points on one side and two points on, on the other so just don't make it balanced don't write equal points this is a point to note So that's it on our second video on IELTS writing. Do if you haven't watched our first video, uh, do ensure that you watch that as well, wherein we cover the tips, strategies, and the do's and don'ts on IELTS writing. And after this, do watch our third video, which shows you how to go about writing a balanced approach essay. Here is our um, here are our contact details. Um, you can write an email to academy for benchmarking at gmail dot com. You can also uh, send in a WhatsApp number or call us on nine eight nine two two three triple six zero or nine eight nine two four one six six five zero. And the third one is nine eight one nine two two one six two one. Thank you.